Welcome to One Academy. Myself Deepak Krishnamayam. I'm an instructional engineer in AMI, a verified educator. So this is the first lesson for the test for fresh concrete series. All right. The first lesson will be a test to detect one of the most annoying problems faced by the engineers today and all the executions today. So that's the bleeding. All right. But before that, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of One Academy. Also follow us to the app and the website. So let's detect some bleeding in concrete. Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a great day. So this is the first lesson in the test for fresh concrete series, alright? So the first lesson, we have to make it a bit memorable. So we are going to do a detection on one of the annoying problems uh, for both the engineers and the people who are in execution. It's called as the bleeding. Okay, so the, the, so the first lesson or the, les the opening batsman for our series is the test for bleeding, alright? So I hope you're ready, let's start. So before starting any laboratory experiment or any kind of technical aspect, it's good to know that, it's good to know in advance some of the theories behind it, okay? So now we are going to see some of the basic facts regarding the experiment and regarding the bleeding, right? So let's move. So before starting any technical term or to understand a technical term or do an experiment on any scientific term, it's quite good to know the definition of it because definition provides some of the most valuable information about that specific term and also you can we can get a pre notion about the character of that substance or, or that technical term so we have the definition for bleeding right here okay so bleeding is a phenomena in which water comes out to the top surface of the concrete being the lowest specific gravity among the constituents concrete constituents of the concrete all right so to know more about bleeding, I've done a separate lesson on bleeding itself, so you can check that. So any laboratory experiment should be based on a specific guidelines provided by a recognized institution. Okay, so here we follow the IS code 9103 It's a fancy number, right? 1199. So the standard is provided by the Indian standard itself. So please note down this uh, definition as well as the IS code. This will be asked as a viva question. All right. So this is another form of segregation itself, bleeding. So this, this is early identified by the appearance of thin layer of water on the top surface of freshly mixed concrete. And finally, the formation of latents on the surface. So what is this latents? Latents is a scum-like substance that forms on the top surface, which is the mixture of water and cement that comes out from the matrix of the concrete. All right. Now the result. Okay, so the result of this exper experiment is the bleeding water, which is expressed in percentage. Okay, so these are some of the basic facts that we must know before the experiment. Now let's move on to the experiment itself. Okay, first and foremost, the objective of the experiment. So the main objective of the experiment is to determine the relative quantity of mixing water that will, be, that will bleed from a sample of freshly mixed concrete. Very simple language. It's a... Uh, our aim is to determine the amount of water that comes out of the concrete matrix as bleeding. All right, so that's it. Now let's see what are the apparatus required for the experiment. All right. So the first and foremost, one of the most important apparatus that are required for the experiment is a cylindrical measure. Okay, which has a cap capacity that is the volume of 0 0.01 meter cube, which has an internal diameter of 250 mm and an internal height of 280 mm internal diameter of 250 mm and internal height of 280 mm with a capacity of 0 0.01 meter cube okay so that's a cylindrical measure second equipment we need is a tamping rod okay it, uh, the tamping rod is used to provide the uh, necessary compaction next one is the pipette okay so pipette you have seen uh, definitely you have seen in your environmental lab it's like a slender tube which has a bulb in the middle which is used to pipette out the liquid uh, which is uh, passed onto the conical flask and we build it and, and the color changes. Hope you understand the explanation of what I'm uh, uh, measuring about, mentioning about, right? So that's pipette. All right. Next and last, we need a graduated jar of 100 centimeter cube capacity. All right. Now let's see the procedure of this experiment. This is a very simple experiment and the procedure is also very simple. All right. So first and foremost, take enough sample of freshly mixed concrete. All right. So first and foremost, we need an enough sample of freshly mixed concrete that is required for the experiment. All right. Now fill the container with the concrete layer by layer up to 250 mm plus or minus 3. All right. That is, we have to fill the container, okay, that cylindrical container with the freshly uh, taken sample of concrete layer by layer 
up to a height of 250 mm plus or minus 3. Alright, so while filling layer by layer, each layer should be of uh, 50 mm deep. Alright, so each layer should have a depth of 50 mm. Which brings us to know that uh, almost in 5 layers, the concrete will be, I mean the cylinder will be filled with the concrete. Alright, now each layer should be provided with enough compaction with the minimum strokes of 60 each. Okay, so compaction is provided by the tamping rod. Alright, so enough compaction to be provided to each uh, layer uh, with a minimum stroke of 60 each uh, with the help of tamping rod. Okay, so that's it. Now, once the cylinder is filled by providing enough compaction by layer by layer filling, the top level is uh, top surface is leveled, smoothened, and now the concrete filled inside the cylinder is weighed. Alright, now we need to bleed the water from the concrete we need to make it into exact natural position okay that means the specimen should be kept undisturbed for a while okay so hence the specimen is kept at a level surface it is covered with the lid so that no other external particles won't enter into it and also it should be free from any vibrations or any kind of disturbance all right now wait for some time now water will be accumulated at the top surface and this water is pipetted out by using a pipet. Alright, so how it is done? It is done by at each 10 minutes interval for first 40 minutes. Okay, so the first 40 minutes at each 10 minute, 10th minute, the water is pipetted out. Okay, now after the 40 minutes uh, window is over, now after every 30 minutes, the pipetting is done. Alright. So after 40 minutes, in the next 30 minutes, in the next 30 minutes, the pipetting is done till the bleeding ceases. Alright, that means the, till the bleeding stops. Alright. Now, how, uh, so what happens in the water which is pipetted out? What we do is that the pipetted water is taken in a graduated jar. Okay, the water is pipetted out by using the pipette. Now it is transferred to the, um, it is transferred or it is collected in a graduated jar and the quantity of water is measured or is recorded for each. Alright, so that's it. The experiment is over. Now let's move on to the calculation. Calculation is very simple, just a percentage. So first and foremost, we have the form, uh, we have the bleeding water percentage. That's the result. And the formula is VW divided by the N into S divided by W, the whole into 100. Alright, so VW is not Volkswagen, it's a total mass of bleeding water in concrete. Alright, N is the net mass of water in the batch, that too in kilogram. And um, pardon me, it's not concrete, kilogram. Okay, it's in kilogram. Alright, now W is the total mass of water in the entire batch. Alright, that too in kilogram. Alright, now S is the mass of the sample in kilogram. Alright, so hence you apply all these values in this formula, you will get a percentage of bleeding water. But Sometimes you might find another formula which is it's a more p practical one and most of the laboratories I suppose will follow this formula in the lab tests, especially in engineering colleges. But both are correct. It's just like mathematics. Okay, you have the result but you have different solutions. But you get the correct answer only. That's it. So here we, ha we have another formula which is quite a more simpler one. It's more easy to understand. So here again the bleeding water in percentage. So the formula is B by W into 100. Okay. So don't confuse that if your lab la laboratory in charge has given you some other variables. It doesn't matter what variable it is. You just need to, uh, you know, uh, say in your, I mean, specify what variable stands for what. All right. So here B stands for the total quantity of bleeding water. Okay. So total quantity of bleeding water. And W stands for total quantity of sample in the water sample in the concrete. So both will be in ML. Alright, so both will cancel out each other right here. Okay, so here, so the previous formula, the measurement was in kilograms. Alright, but here the measurement is most probably will be in ml. Okay, so both by using dimensional analysis here, both the formula will be cancelled out, and hence you'll get a percentage. Okay, bleeding water. So for bleeding water, there is we cannot find a standard uh, percentage, but the widely ac accepted uh, percentage limit is the 10 percentage for bleeding water. Okay. So I suppose the most of the laboratories will give you an extent as 10 percentage, but it can vary. So there is no such, uh, you know, strict, rigid percentage for bleeding water because it's very difficult to measure that. Okay. So as in general, 10 percentage is given as after a lot of trial and error method. 10 percentage is provided as a standard one. All right. So I hope you understand today's lesson. I uh, it's I hope it's uh, helpful for you. 
Now, thank you for tuning in. Please uh, comment your suggestions. Please rate my presentation. Please recommend and share the slides. And also, this is my link to the profile within Academy. You can see the other works that I've done based on the basic constituents in the concrete. That is the fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, and the cement. And he, similarly, all the lab tests for those are explained over there in the simplest manner. Okay, I'll see you in the next class. Thank you for tuning in. I wish you a great day. Ciao.